Hey guys, I have to pre-record this week's workshop session as I have a family obligation that I did not know I had to take someone to the airport. So I'm pre-recording because this is going to be a really great one to watch over and over again as it is a, a 4D uh, heart-centered uh, alchemy training. Okay, so I told you guys last time we're going to really start to get into the magic. Now, from what we experienced uh, in uh, another class that I think I'll probably share here with you guys, just because I think it's it's uh, appropriate, was the meditation that St. Germain did for uh, opening up the heart. Now, where, where we are in our fairy tale, just to back up a bit, and the whole concept of this happily ever after is the journey from the solar plexus to the heart. So that is the entire yellow brick road. And it sounds like, oh, that should be an easy shift, right? It should be like, oh, that's an easy quantum leap because it's right there. You know, we've done the, we've done the work on the root. We've done the work on the sacral, not all the way, but now where ego is kind of at that stuck point of this solar plexus. Solar plexus represents doing. Okay. The heart represents being. So this is the greatest quantum leap that we will make in this entire ascension. This step right here is the most difficult. So after this, right, after you begin to live, vibrate, and radiate from the heart field, everything else is downhill. Okay, so this is going to be the thing that is going to take the most time on your journey and is going to be more of all of those past and futuristic conflicts that are all going to meet right here. So I would consider between the solar plexus and the heart chakra, the walk through the shadow of death. And the reason why is because ego believes it's dying. As you stop doing so much, the ego starts to panic as it has been able to hide its very existence in all of your doing and all of your thinking of all of your worrying of all of your judging and of all your energy that you have all out the world and when you start to live from love I'm going to tell you it is so childlike it is so simple that you're going to be like why did I have to learn all this spirituality if I was just going to like pull up a happy memory and send that to the world right and so you'll see that the higher up you get the more simple uh the work is because basically once you get into the heart, you're into the neutral, you're in the zero point energy, you are in that childlike nature, you're in that imagination. So four, fourth density is the fourth chakra anchored in. So now the fourth density means that you have all four of those bottom chakras and the, the, four, the heart all integrated together which means that they're not spinning like separate from each other. They're all like lighting up and they light up. And then the heart is what will then heal or integrate the rest of all the distortion that needs to be worked through. So it's almost like a hell. It's like if you've never had a healthy relationship, you can heal so much on your own. Like you can do all the shadow work. You can do all your early childhood work. You can do, you know, you can manifest, you can write out your goals, but until you meet that person, until you get that second point you cannot heal the rest of the way because you need now that reflection of the healthy relationship so that you get to show up differently. And you also get to get shown unconditional love. You also get to share unconditional love, which is not something that we had before. And so there's only a certain amount of integration we can do until we get into the heart chakra. And then we will take care of the other ideas of the relationships. And so the, the first part of this session, and it's going to be in two parts because it's going to be like the kind of the theory, and then we're going to do the practical. And the theory is going to be about you understanding that you are in relationship to everything in your world. And I've taught, I've taught this since the beginning, but I think it's not been truly qualified or understood. But, and, and again, even by myself, because I'm saying, I'm like, sounds good, right? But when you look at true awareness is that the only way God can know itself is as if it has a second point 
so that it can see itself, okay? So everything that materializes as a timeline or an idea or anything it has to have two points. It has to have the masculine and feminine energy, the vision and the action, or, right, the, the, the feeling, desire, and then the actual experience of. And so whenever you're doing quantum healing, it's always going to be in two points. You're going to be working at two points, which is where I am and where I want to be or the problem and the solution. OK, and so what happens when we are trying to work out our problems in relationships with money, we're always looking at one point. We're always trying to find the solution. OK, but again, many of us don't know the root of the problem that is generating the issue because we're only looking for how it doesn't feel good. So we want the solution kind of like the idea is if your family isn't doing well, your solution might be to make more money. So the family has more options, but that's actually not the root of the problem was money. And so as you're trying to have money uh, because it's an untruth and it's not the correct root you won't be able to make the money or the money won't help, you see. So we want to find the actual root of the problem. And only when you're working in those two points will you ever be truly honest with yourself. And so it's almost like marriage counseling, which I did for years. It's like both of them have to, they have their own truth here. And they all have their own universe. Because again, I have my backstory, my self-concept. I have what my dad did to me and what my mom did to me. And now I'm in this marriage with you having a completely different storyline. And we might intersect and connect in certain areas. But the truth of both of what we're saying is true to us which means that, oh, no, she's not telling the truth. She's telling the truth from her perspective. You're telling the truth from your perspective. And said until you can have the observer, okay, the observer that can hold space and be non-biased for these two points, there will actually never truly be any healing. And this is why mentors are important because or, or beneficial until we get into the heart, because once you get into the heart, you'll have your observer there. But until then, that journey there is it's great to have someone hold space and act as that observer point so that it can neutrally, lovingly see both sides and get to the root of where the disconnect is, where the separation is, and why it's not working, you see. And so until you have that observer, which you guys will learn how to do in the second session today, is that the observer is the one that can hold space to the two to the two energies that are both saying they're wrong, they're wrong, I'm right, I'm right. And it's become in separation. And so this is where any fundamental big issue that you're dealing with is going to be had. So this concept of this fairy tale is our journey back to the heart or back to home. And while I think St. Germain uses uh, Wizard of Oz quite a bit is because of the kind of the metaphor of your destiny that the like your journey back to the heart, it's you have your very specific yellow brick road. OK, everybody does. Their journey to the heart has its own road. Now, how you get there, that's where your free will is. OK, how you get there, when you get there, with whom you get there with. Right. That is where you get to decide decor, like all of it along the way. But you already set up pre incarnation. You had to create that second point for yourself. So when you were working in the I, well, then you needed to create the am. And so you were like, oh, I am. That's a complete circuit. That's going to be the two point in, in quantum physics. OK, so this is going to be what creates the timeline. And so you set that up before you come. So you already have the wish fulfilled when you drop in. But then you have karma and you have things that you have to work through to get to this place that you set up for yourself. And that's the journey. And and why it's the happily ever after is because when you can arrive at the heart chakra, love is the antidote for every problem. It is the solution. It is the medicine. It is the food. 
It is everything. And I think that as empaths and light workers and sensitive beings, we have always desired to just, why can't we just get along? Why can't we just love each other? Why does this always have to happen? Or why is this person judging? You know, and it's frustrating because even if we're doing those things, we still want to live in a world where no one's doing those things. And so obviously we have to start with ourselves. And, and this, I'm going to tell you guys, this is a super fast game changer once you truly understand that you are in relationship with everything. And I've always broken it down like this. You are in relationship with the four aspects of your game, okay? This game will not change even when you get into 5D. It adds one tiny layer, right? Because in the fourth dimension or third dimension, we're really working with time. We're working with health. Uh, which is our personal space, our field, and we're working with relationships, and we're looking, we're working with money or our definition of freedom. When you get into the fourth density, you add space to that. Space is like adding the observer, okay? Like, let me take a pause so I can observe myself. So let me get some space so I can unwind, relax. Okay, so this is where you're going to have that observer really come in and begin to navigate the, the next level of this journey. So kind of like when Jesus was going through his 40 days and 40 nights, he had his, his journey to experience, right? but he also had his relationship with the father. And so that father, the Holy Spirit, wasn't the Holy Spirit at that time, but until the resurrection, but until then he still had that two point connection with home. He could check in, right? And so what happens here is we lose that connection to source. And so we create a two point with the ego. The ego becomes our second point. And, and then as soon as ego gets us, attached to something well now we're in a two-point situation with a relationship and a two-point situation with food and all these other money and that isn't the actual great way to build reality because it's not money that you need it's not it's not perfect health it's not the perfect relationship it's being the perfect relationship for yourself and then everything is molded out of that and then everything we see along the journey is just the mirrored reflection of of our own of, of our own um, spell of forgetfulness, kind of like Sleeping Beauty falls asleep, right? So it's like we're falling asleep in the dream and then our job is to wake up in the dream and then get back into the heart. So we start off in the heart when we incarnate and then the heart kind of gets, um, we have to put walls and masks around the pain that we are given. And then the ego is created from an inversion of basically us not being allowed to be ourselves. And so we have to distort ourselves and be what the world expects us to be. And then when we go through our awakening, we, we start to unpack that and we start to take those masks off. And so this is the journey back. And we all experience it. If you came into the third dimension, this is what you came for. You came to get to the next level of your happily ever after. And this is why every single fairy tale has the dark forest. It has the villain. It has magic. It has some sort of trauma that ignites the whole journey. And this is where you are. So you do have your happily ever after coming. All of you, it's not like you're just going to pay bills till you die unless you choose to. You probably wouldn't be in this class if that was your highest joy. But if you are in this class, you're probably really having a desire to live more joyfully, more peacefully, more abundantly without working necessarily more because you know that you have magic superhuman abilities. But where are they? Right. Well, they're underneath. Uh, they're underneath the programs that you have created to survive. And so we're in that process. The journey home is the unpacking and it's the integration of ourselves back into who we started off to be. Remember, uh, confidence had to die and become shame. Your self-worth had to die and become guilt, right? Your joy had to die and become anger. Your life had to die and become loss in order to form the ego. So the ego is almost like that falling asleep or that death feeling of just 
lack of life, lack of motivation, you know, that not the desire to, to go and do anything is what kind of happens to us as we get older until we usually create some sort of big event for ourselves to awaken. Pressure creates diamonds, right? And we don't have to continue to learn that way, especially after the meditations that St. Germain is going to be sharing with you and the, the alchemy of love that's going to be introduced today. You're going to start to see that you do not have to wait for a big event in order to get to the heart or to find self-love. You're going to be able to do it like, like a treasure treasure map. You're going to get a little piece at a time and it is going to help you. It's going to help you become confident. Like I'm, I'm succeeding at this. I'm changing. I'm feeling better about myself. The ego wants it all right now, or it must not exist. And that is just not how it unpacks for you because your higher self is such a huge frequency that there's no way that it could get into your body without your body exploding. So it's almost like, it's almost like when a body is going through contraction and expansion in order to birth a baby, it has to go through that contraction expansion to make space. And this is where we, we are taking you on this workshop right now. This is why you have the dietary advice because that helps you make space that allows light, light codes to get into the physical cells because it's not bombarded with all the food. And so we're, we're contracting and we're expanding. We're contracting and we're expanding. And so if you think that you're not going to go through those contractions, that you, know, you have a high and you're going to stay on that high until you're fully integrated into the heart field, you will be contracting, expanding. And if you can just go, this is my new normal and I can love this because I know that this is just part of the birthing of the embodiment of my Christ itself, which is higher self embodying the physical vessel that is the Christ child. So obviously we're going to be wanting to be childlike on arrival. So we're working through all of the difficult life is hard, work is hard, and we've got to unpack and decide and choose different belief systems here or we are going to be held accountable to that which we believe and the belief system is is found in the subconscious mind and that is known to be our feminine it is our known to be the flow state and the script of your self-concept so all of these things have to be taken into consideration because a lot of the times what you believe on the conscious level is very different than what you believe on the subconscious level, just like a marriage that is out of harmony. There's two different opinions going on and both are trying to do what they want to do, but it is not working for the marriage. And you are very much having a marriage in this reality because your left and right hemisphere is masculine and feminine or the king and the queen of the kingdom and the cells are the citizens and they are going back and forth between leaders like who who are we listening to here you know and then you have the idea of the child that wants to play and 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 experience this physical vessel but you're tired and you're overworked and so the inner child can't play and this is where we get lost into the ego's idea of seeking healing and learning this is the ego's a uh, spiritual uh, desire is to seek, to learn, and to heal for the rest of your life, which means you will never get enough knowledge. You will never feel smart enough to take action. You will never truly put yourself out there because you'll have the fraud complex. And so while you're operating on your spiritual journey with your ego, you will be getting nowhere fast, except you will be gaining a lot of intelligence that will be absolutely useless when you get into the heart. Mm. I know from experience, okay? So let's jump into this. How does this work? So this idea of relationships is fundamental for you to grasp. And if you're in a hurry, you need to slow down to speed up because if you do not get this point, you will miss the whole concept here. The fact that you are in a relationship with your body, you are in a relationship with money, you are in a relationship with time. You are in a relationship with each one of your relationships differently. You are in a relationship with Mother Earth. You are in a relationship with your system. You're in a relationship with your family, okay? And so we go on and on and on and on. And we could also de-layer all of the aspects of relationships you're having with money. So let us say money is one relationship, but debt is another relationship. Okay, credit cards are another relationship. 
Someone else's burden you're responsible for is another relationship. So it's endless here. And again, when people are working on manifesting money, what they are doing is they are, are looking at this big problem back here, and then they are using modalities and affirmations and, uh, you know, prayer and meditation to basically get enough to fix this problem. And this is why the manifestation tools will not work if you have trauma with something. You know, like some people are like, I manifest this my soulmate in two weeks. Well, you must have not had trauma that you haven't already plowed through in order for that to happen. Because again, you're manifesting what you are. And if you are run trying to outrun this debt by making as much money as you can in the world, then your actor is running from a monster, which means that you're going to keep running from that monster no matter what you do in the present moment. And so we have to look at the objective here of what actual relationship am I in? And then how do I get from the action state of, oh, what do I do about this debt to get into the being state of unconditional love? So again, it is your healer, it is your magic, it is your medicine, it is your food. And so in a simple meditation, which is in the stillness, basically, you will get to be the me, myself, and I within yourself, and you will be able to change the frequency of those big bad monsters behind you, bring them right in front of you, change the energy of them, restore the connection and find unconditional love for what 20 minutes ago was a huge scary problem that you will never find a solution for by by action because the thing is is as you get higher up into the spiritual realm it's going to be telepathic communication of oneness it is not going to be separation of doing okay it's like i could run around and do or i could tap into a central mainframe and get it all done kind of like the idea of, of a me as a coach you know i've been coaching for 13 years would i prefer to coach one person for an hour or 100 people for an hour hmm right what what would be more lucrative what would be more fun and what would be more synergistic 100 people so again, in the 3D, it's like, oh, I have to give up one hour away for this amount of dollars. In 4D, it is I am getting paid to connect and play because I am working in the giving and receiving. So let us really break down the definition of how love works. OK, we've talked about unconditional love, which means it's without conditions. OK, which means that that means whatever is happening that there is still love. And what is love? It's life, okay? It's alive. And so if you stopped in breath or out breath, eventually your body would die. So this is how we know that the give and receive formula that God created for us to breathe is also the formula of abundance. It is also the formula of prosperity. It is the formula of freedom. It is the formula of health. It is the formula of peace. It is the formula for everything. If you are giving and receiving equally in a state of non-resistance or in a state of unconditional love, you will manifest that what you are pouring into as it will be pouring back into you. This is how we fulfill our desires is we breathe life out of ourselves, share the very desire that we desire, and then we receive it back. OK, so many of us think that we're doing this. Well, I'm working hard, but that is not the way that ego operates in its definition of abundance, because ego is separation of source, okay? It, 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 ha it has no idea that there is an infinite, infinite world of abundance out there. It does not know that it can bend time. It does not know that it can heal relationships or, or be the mirror of something else. It, it sees only what is. There's only circumstances to the ego, and there is only your past, and there is only the future presence based on the past. There is no other world to the ego because that's the limited mask that the ego uses in its belief in mortality. You, on the other hand, know that this is just your scuba suit 
and your breathing is keeping the physical body alive, but you do not need this physical body to live. If this body decides it's done or you decide your body is done, you will literally return into the non-physical plane. You will be, if not more alive than you were before, because the body does definitely weigh the spirit down and all of the mind and everything is really heavy on the spirit. So once the body's not there, it's, it's so much freedom, so much prosperity, so much time, but it's all these things. And so again, ego is constantly saying we have to stay alive, but we have to be suffering in order to stay alive. And the spirit does not agree. So now we have to understand that we are in a relationship that is probably toxic. Okay. So if I'm in a toxic relationship, and I can only see you, and you can only see me, and I can only take responsibility for me, and you can only take responsibility for you, but we can't decide, what do we need? We need an observer. We need a third person to come in and hold space as a neutral point, okay? So if there was two points at a line, and you wanted to change the timeline of something, you really can't change it at this or end or this end. You would change it right in the middle at the zero point and recalibrate the balance. And then this would send equal amounts of energy to both sides and it would basically heal the whole. So this is why when you just can't get along, this is why, well, I'm going to go talk to my friend or I'm going to go talk to my friend. The problem with that is your friend is biased on your opinion. Your friend's worried about your well-being. Their friend is worried about their freedom. So again, you're not going to get the true observer. So what I highly recommend for any of you guys out there who have, do not have a rock solid, and be honest because this will backfire on you, if you do not have a rock solid relationship with your higher self, okay, at this moment where you can feel that calm and peace in the storm, that's your higher self. You have a voice telling you it's going to be okay. That's your higher self. If you do not have that yet, I highly recommend that you reach out to me and you ask me to play your observer for you for three sessions, because you do not want your ego pretending to be higher self here, or this will get worse for you. OK, not scaring you. I'm just saying that if you have that little bit of inner peace that you have created from this journey, then that is enough to be able to act as the observer in this exercise. And uh, and St. Germain is calling this the alchemy of love and and and, and how to activate that love into all of your traumatic relationships. OK, so this is going to be very powerful. It is a tool that you can use over and over again because we are on a spiral point, which means that you may come back around uh, to the same issues at a different layer. Like you might deal with money at this layer and then money starts to flow again and then it gets a little blocked and stuck. You do it again. You'll uncover a different version. So it's all good. It will work for any layer. And it is the same simple procedure. So unpacking relationships, we must understand that if giving and receiving is the health of love. So when love is healthy, there is a equal exchange of energy. OK, now in Christianity, you could say, oh, well, you know, in, in, the, in the marriage, like the husband goes to work and the wife. The wife is equally doing, holding space, acting as the visionary, acting as the atmosphere, holding the peace. There's a lot going on there that you cannot judge a book by its cover. Just know in a healthy marriage, the reason it is healthy is because there is an equal exchange of energy. There is no power struggle. There is no competition. There is no gossip. There is no resentment. OK, that may seem like a foreign idea to you, but as soon as you start working in this process and you actually start using your heart feel the way it was created, then ego will have its job become obsolete and it will have no option other than to shift back into its original form, which was part of your spirit, okay, which was confidence, which was worthiness, which was joy. So it will revert back and it will be able to do all the things that it was designed to do, keep you focused, anchored, aware that you are in the game so that you're not like, woo, you know, going completely out of body all the time, but it will go into its job and it will be acting from unconditional love, which would be amazing, okay? So looking at 
the distortion here. So remember, ego is the exact inversion of higher self. It's going to be playing the opposite role in your reality. So if higher self is prosperity and abundance, then ego is poverty and scarcity. Okay. If higher self is joy and bliss, right, then ego is going to be suffering and misery. Okay. So if higher self is connection, then ego is going to be attachment. All right. So different attachment is glued, stuck. Okay. Connected is I can come together and I can move apart. That's healthy, right? That's love. True, honest, unconditional love does not mean that we are stuck together for life. You can't change. I can't change. That's where misery is. But if we are in a committed, connected relationship that says, I will work on me for you, you work on you for me, well, then that might just work, you see. So it's connection, not attachment. So you can see the ego formulates in the exact inversion of higher self. Higher self is worthiness. Ego is unworthiness and guilt. Higher self is confidence. Ego is uh, shame and down the road. You've already been trained on these five aspects, okay? And how they are going to find themselves everywhere in your reality is through belief systems, practice, commitment, obligation, uh, entrapment. You know, the, the, remember, the ego wants you attached to everything in the third dimension so it can stay alive. It wants you addicted to the third dimension so it can stay alive in the in the world of form higher self once you detached and connected to those things that light you up people that you love ideas that you have but it wants you to be able to be free to expand and once you're velcroed or super glued to something like a big debt or a marriage that is not serving you, or a disease that you manifested, it's not going to feel like it's going to go easy. But you haven't seen what love can do yet. Okay, so when you see what love can do, you will start to see that this entire ascension is going to get so much easier for you when you start living through this heart feel. So what role does the ego play in give and receive? Well, if love is give and receive equal exchange of energy for expansion, well, then ego is contraction, it's separation, it's um, hoarding, it's uh, uh, it's taking, okay, it's using. So it's like ego is the one that's going to use all the milk and then leave the jug in there empty so no one buys new milk, so now there's no milk. Okay, like that would be an idea of like the opposite of give and receive. Instead of like, oh, I drank all the milk. Would someone go to the store? That would be give and receive or here's some money. Okay, ego is going to get, he's going to get attached to things. It's going to drain things and it's going to leave things empty. All right. And so if you look at nature, nature is constantly replenishing itself. Even if it does have its birth and death experience, it's always designed to replenish itself. The digestive system of Mother Earth is the fun, the fungi. OK, that is what digests everything. So her 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 macro is our ma micro. We have the same digestive system in a different way. So she's perfectly set up for this give, receive, life, death, expansion, contraction formula that continues to evolve into higher states of consciousness through its own evolution of basically coming out of its own snakeskin and be beginning again. Ego, it will destroy things down to the absolute essence of it so something can no longer exist. Like the ego would eat the seed if it was hungry enough even though it knew that you needed a seed to grow an orchard to feed a family, it would eat the seed. So that this is the difference in the concept of giving and receiving equally or consuming, hoarding, hiding, avoiding attachments. OK, and see so where your biggest stuck points are in life as well as mine are going to be where ego is out of alignment with the love formula. So wherever it, something is not flowing to you or you're not flowing out, it is going to become because the inversion of love has been distorted in that area. And you might be thinking, no, I love this thing more than anything, but your definition of love is the ego's definition of love.
How many of you guys have been in that relationship where they loved you so much that they got super clingy and attached to you? See, that's ego's definition of love, not higher self's definition of love. Okay. And so you want to look at where your obsessions are and addictions are and be brutally honest with you because now you're going to have a very loving, non biased, non judgmental tool for you to be able to sit and recalibrate the energy of these distortions in your reality because ego doesn't just live in the mind of shame. It lives in the shame of your bills. It lives in the shame of your relationship, your kids. Okay. It's, it's, it's somewhere in the past documents, right? So I was at someone's house the other day and the house was like so clean and pretty. And I just kept walking by this one area. And I was like, Oh, I feel like stomach. Like, I'm like, is this where you pay your bills? I'm like, yeah. I was like, Oh, okay. So we might want to do something here, you know? And it's because I could just feel it's like contraction. Like, Oh, this is where all the joy gets, goes to die. Right. This is where all the freedom goes to die right here. And so I could feel that. And that's, Something in your own, right? So that this idea of, okay, first and foremost, I'm in a relationship with debt that is toxic if the debt's not going. I'm in a relationship with my partner and it's toxic if we're not seeing eye to eye. So all you actually have to do is look for, look for what is not in flow, okay? So what is not in flow? What areas are not in flow is where giving and receiving is out of balance, and so that means that it's not operating from the fourth dimensional idea of unconditional love. It's coming from the third dimensional uh, of idea of love, uh, which is take, consume, hoard, avoid, deny, reject, attach. Okay, so the, the, there's a whole list. And uh, as a third point to this session, there is going to be a list for you guys to be able to sit with. It'll You'll understand it more when we get to the second session. Uh, and you'll be able to go through the session and, and, oh yes, I do, I do feel this. And so I've given you kind of like, uh, activation words so that when you are sitting with your relationship in front of you, doing your heart centered repair, your recalibration, your reconciliation, then you will be able to look and see ooh, where else ego might be hiding in this relationship. You'll also have the list of all the loving aspects that you would desire to now, uh, uh, inject through your giving into this object. And I will explain that a little bit more in a minute. So first, we want to finish up the topic of the relationships. So every relationship that is suffering in your life, and this is where you have to be really honest with yourself. Okay. Like you, you want to say, Oh no, we get along fine. This is what I want you to do. Close your eyes. And I want you to think about how they see you through their eyes and see if you get a little stomach knot, okay? If you feel like they are judging you, then that is a toxic relationship, even if you are loving them, okay? So usually when you feel like you are in a state of unconditional love with someone, but they are not reciprocating, it is because the give and receive is off of balance and light workers have this wonderful ability to overgive from an empty cup, okay? And that that is coming from the third dimensional reality of love. Pour from an empty cup and be of service. That's what your religions teach you. In the fourth density, it is be of service with an overflowing supply of abundance. There is never be of service in an empty cup because that would be self-destructive, okay? But we are not taught that. We are taught to be good humans is to be selfless and sacrificing. In fourth density, it is fill thyself with love, give away your extra. Don't give away your essence. You give away your extra oversupply. Your water's overflowing with unconditional love because a little tiny bit of love is a lot more in volume than the idea of third dimensional love that has to come from some sort of idea or it has to come from some form outside of you. Like the way you show love in the third dimension is going to be, you know, physical touch. It's going to be uh, cooking. It's going to be money. It's going to be talking. It's going to be doing. It's going to be going. It's going to be giving up something you want. Everything third dimensional love based is usually from the doing point. And everything from the fourth dimensional loving unconditional place is a place of being and exuding and expressing and allowing and accepting. So it is literally night and day. 
And so many of us who have believed that we were the most loving person we knew are going to find out in a few minutes that we were not, but we were coming from a good place. It's all good intentions because like I, for years thought I'm the most loving, kind person I know. And yet when I started to work in unconditional love, I was like, Ooh, that's a shadow. That's a shadow. That's ego love. That's ego love. That's ego love. But you just don't know what you don't know. And so when you know, then you can know. All right. So like this idea is that you are in relationship to all of your universe. And this is how God knows itself. It gets to look through your eyes at that second point and reflect back to you to recognize what it is, okay? So like if I didn't have a mirror and nobody else could describe how I looked, I would never know how I looked. Same with you, same with lots of things in the universe. Like the rock will never know what it looks like or what it feels like unless someone describes it or someone picks it up and says, oh, hello, rock. And now the rock's like, now I know myself. So what a gift. Now we want to go pick up all the rocks, right? But again, when it's by itself, it only has that one point and it, it, it is holding space in existence. It is doing what it was designed to do in the realm of consciousness is having the exact experience it chooses. But if for some reason you pick up a rock and now it has a second point, it gets to see itself through you observing it. Okay. And now it has a new and new idea of itself. All right. And some rocks want to manifest that. They want to be seen. My son keeps bringing home rocks every, every day. Look at this one. Look at this one. He's so excited. It's like a friend. So you see, it's like, this is the idea of like the first and second dimension, the third dimension. And this is third dimension is, is time and space, right? And form. And so then we're going to be inverting that in fourth D, which is time space. Okay, so it's like the opposite in 4D. You'll notice that time begins to become much more your friend when you are starting to live from the heart. As you guys seen when you did this guided meditation of love the other day, all you did was recall a memory and you were able to heal the whole world from one session. How long did it take you? You know, instead of like, I'm going to go heal everybody and feed everybody. It's like, no, this is not your job. Your job is to be in love and that will radiate out of you. And that will put into the vibration of humanity and that will change the clarity of the water, right? So if I'm pure water because I'm in pure love and I'm pouring consistently because love doesn't go away. You never fall out of love. You can hold love forever and you never run out. If I pour in clear love unconditional into dirty water, eventually it's going to run clear. That's all we got to do, guys. This is how we are of service for humanity. But we've got to make sure that our love is clear, which means that it is not dirty, chunky, attached, suffering, denied, poverty. Okay? All right. So the concept is, is that you understand understand that you are in a relationship with everything and where there is flow there is healthy give and receive where there is lack of flow there is belief or blocked energy in the give or receive okay and it's got to come from subjectiveness which means it's going to come from your belief system it might it you might be like yeah they're not pouring into me as much as i am them and then they could say the same thing about you so there's no one right and wrong here it's just your awareness this is why you're not going to do this alchemy of love treatment on yourself with anyone else because they will be in a different universe now what i would say is if you're a married couple and you happen to both watch my stuff you're going to have a happy marriage after this because you can do it on your own. He can do it on his own. And there you go. And then you come together and now it's, oh, let's, let's figure out this give and receive thing properly through a, the idea that when we are in unconditional love, we are going to bear fruit. So think about love is multiplication. Okay. Ego love is subtraction. This is how when you're in a toxic relationship, your life gets smaller in the relationship. You give up things. You stop wanting to do things. You gain weight. You get sick. You start getting irritated. You know, things start going wrong in the job. Money starts to become an issue. So again, when the ego is in love, it is in consuming and destruction. Okay. So think about it. Primal love is lust. Because it's like, like, oh, I'm going to devour you. I am going to suffocate you. I'm going to bleed you dry. Or the opposite is I'm going to 
feed you until you die. I'm going to over nurture you until you can't do anything on your own. So there's two sides to ego love. There's over nurturing and then there's abusive under nurturing. And those are the only two ways that ego knows how to love. And you might be doing those in certain areas and not know because this is what you learned and you are doing your best to filter your higher expression through that which you believe. So this might be completely oblivious to you, but this is not another guilt and shame to add to your tank. This is just an awareness of, oh, I was operating on the old system. Okay, so we can let that go. All right, so let's take let's take money because money is going to be one of the things that most light workers desperately would like to have, okay? Uh, but also they do not want to commit to a system. So the reason why I think light workers and impasse struggle more with the idea of money or more of the idea of adulting around money is because they know somewhere deep inside of them that they do not want to get attached to the system that will enslave them. And so they would rather kind of live in that poverty consciousness and make a little bit and, and you know, go out into the world, make a little bit, come back in and live the life that they want to live. But then that is also what's called feast or famine. And that is called scarcity. So there's two op opportunities. You can go in to have the nine to five paycheck, right? And you have a scarcity of time and freedom, or you have your time and freedom, but you have a scarcity of money. And so again, whichever side of that you're on, it's usually the light workers will find themselves on either side. And I feel like the more advanced spirit you are, the less you could be part of the system. And so you might be doing things like Uber and this and all these other things, just just to get the pay, but it's also taking a lot of your creativity and a lot of your energy and a lot of your time. And so if you want to tap into the kingdom of heaven's abundance and, and really be operating from the giving and receiving point, which is all you need to learn how to do, you do not need to follow the system rules, is to clarify the heart so that higher self can express through you and so that you will be qualified for that inheritance and for that um for that flow because we just have to get to the flow state that's it where money is flowing like everything all right so okay let's take money now you're in a relationship with money it might not be money that's the problem when you see money you might light up right you might be like oh money right okay so it might not be like physical dollars it might not be it might be the bills okay it might be the credit cards all right it might be something else, medical something. It could be student loans. It could be something. But what I would recommend is that you look at money as kind of like its own family, right? Just like you have your own family. You get your mother, your father. You got, you know, you, you got uncles over here. And over here in money, you have physical money. You have credit. You have uh, you have debt. You have um, insurance. You have, uh, you know, big mortgages and things like that, which I would put all into the category of economics or money, all right? Now, I would sit and look at your, first of all, it is just an observation. There's no judgment. And like I said, if this just triggers you, like you can't even look at this, well, now you know why you're not going to have it. But second of all, it, if your higher self isn't excited to do this with you, I would recommend that you invest in a few sessions with me and let me hold space for you because this is super powerful. All right. Okay. So this idea, like, let's just take the bill. Okay. Because uh, out of all those things I've got, the bills feel like the least amount of give and receive. Okay. Even though like, I really like the lights on and uh, you know, when I have a ton of money coming through, I really don't mind paying this bill. I can actually be grateful and be like, Oh, thank you for the lights. But then there's also part of my spiritual ego that knows this is a scam and we should have free energy. And, you know, I'm paying for something that I you know don't even need. And, you know, all the all that energy, right? Anger and wrath and all that stuff that's buried in to that idea of bills. So you really want to get clear on what your belief system is about having this bill. Like, like I said, when we're in overflow, we don't mind paying the bill. But if we're in that famine part of the feast, 
and we don't know where the money's coming from next time and we keep having to push this bill away well see now we're in a toxic relationship and we cannot give that which it's asking to receive and that is where the toxicity of your energy starts to tank so what you cannot give to that you want to give to is is a form of abusive relationship and if it is not giving back to you right it is going to be in a, a form of abusive relationship so i'll share a quick story like a couple years ago i was going through some other challenges of course and all of a sudden i get this water bill for fifteen hundred dollars which was like, usually it's two, three hundred dollars for my water bill or whatever. And so I, it was a huge, it was like thousand dollars more. So of course I'm like, oh, this is a mistake. So I call them up. They're like, no, this is what your water tank says you use this month. And I'm like, but that's impossible unless there's a leak. So they said, yeah, if there's a leak, if we can come out and prove that there's a leak, then we'll take the thousand dollars off. Well, guess what? They couldn't prove that there was a leak. And so it was my word against theirs and they would turn my water off if I did not pay $1,500. So you see, it's things like that that create wrath. It's things like that that create anger in people who are trying to kind of like work the system, but work around the system, right? And like keep everything on, but, you know, not feed the beast. So it's a very, there's a lot of wounding when it comes to light workers and empaths around the idea of like debt and money, because we like to get into debt because it's like that instant gratification of freedom or, oh, I can finally buy this and I can feel prosperity. But then, you know, when we don't stay in prosperity, we cannot create the money to pay the debt off because I will tell you, spending the money feels like prosperity. Owing the money does not feel like prosperity. It feels like scarcity. So again, this is the trap. And again, remember, ego wants you to get glued to the system. And so when they're throwing credit cards at you, oh, here's credit cards, here's credit cards, here's credit cards. It's always like, I'm going to be a responsible adult. I'm not going to go over this amount. And then that scarcity kicks in. And as soon as scarcity kicks in, desperation kicks in. Desperation is anticipation of loss. You're going to be like, well, I, I'm going to do it this time and not next month. And then what happens is every time we do it, our vibration lowers and lowers and lowers on our money flow because now we're indebted and we have no freedom. We don't have the money to spend, but now we have the debt. So now any new money we get that is for joy and play has to go to this. And so then we kind of got, what's the point? And it's not fair. And now our vibration is in a bad place for creating new money. And that was the situation I found myself in last year as I was going through my spiral. Okay. And it was like, oh, I'm getting a little... I'm getting a little uh, underwater here. So anything I do come in, it won't be, it won't go to joy. And then that was very depressing. And so I had a hard time getting my vibration up to create the money to solve the problem. Okay. I'm human. So this is why this is so wonderful because if I would have been like, hold on a second, I'm just in a relationship with debt right now. And I don't want to be in a relationship with debt, but debt, because this is a toxic relationship. I should have never got in. This is narcissistic, but here I am. And in the idea of unconditional love, there's always first responsibility, the ability to respond. So what you're going to do, and I'm hoping that you can hear me as I demonstrate this is I'm going to kind of show you what we're doing. I'm going to pause this and then we're going to start a new session because otherwise this is going to be a really long session. Okay. But we're going to find a place and you can do this on the floor. Um, you can do this at a desk, but I would highly recommend that if you do this, this relationship, this unconditional loving uh, process with, with your, with your, um, bills and they, you'll, you'll hear, you'll hear the rest of it. You want to be, you want everything to kind of be cleared off. You want to have just like all of your energy, be able to focus. You don't want like all this stuff. Don't have people running around you. Cause remember it's a, it's a therapy session where everyone is going home to love, including the debt. So you want to have your belief system about this debt. You're going to have the debt in front of you. Okay. So let's say you have a big debt, but you don't have a physical slip like I do, you can get a piece of paper and you can write debt, how much it is and who it goes for, okay? Now, what's super cool about this is you're not gonna need the money to fix this energy because it's like, if you, if you truly look at the rules of abundance 
is that I have to give to receive, but what if I don't have the money? So how am I going to ever receive? And this is where St. Germain was like, ah, you don't need that. So I'm going to pause this or stop this video, and then we're going to start a second session.